Francesco Racine is definitely someone who deserves our respect. Because it's not often that you can see a player with a height of 186 centimeters playing at the highest level in the spiker position. But Francesco succeeds. And since you have been asking me about this for a long time, today we will analyze the technique and playing style of the European and world champion, the young Italian outside, Francesco Recine. So, as usual, we will not delay any longer. Let's go! By tradition we will start with the reception of the opponent's serve. It seems to me that Francesco does not have any specific ritual before the pass. He constantly changes his position and movements, so I can't mention anything specific in this aspect. But what I have highlighted for myself is that every time Recine tries to maintain maximum eye contact with the server in order to understand exactly what he will try to do in the next second. Outside is charged and focused on reception as much as possible. Also, Italian has another feature. Every time the server makes a toss, Francesco shifts slightly to the left. The servers try to serve between the receivers and thus Recine tries to block these zones. And considering that the server after the toss can no longer control the movements of the receivers, this is quite an interesting and productive maneuver. Francesco is one of the few outsides who tries to take all the float serves from the top and not from the bottom, as most of the players in this position practice. Yes, this partially simplifies the task, but it limits the time and space for approach. What is more important to you, choose for yourself. If we analyze this particular element, then Recine tries to set a counter movement in order to extinguish the force of the serve. He does this by moving towards the ball and squatting, followed by straightening his legs at the moment of contact with the ball. And the mechanics of platform passing is quite standard. All you need to know is that the Italian tries to take the balls in front of him to the maximum. If he succeeds, then the ball is very likely to be delivered to the setter in his hands. But if the ball goes away from Francesco, then problems begin there. There is no point in talking about defense here separately. Outside occupies standard positions that are typical for a player of his role. On the back line, this is the sixth zone. And depending on which side the attack is coming from, Francesco chooses his position. If the opponent attacks from the fourth zone, then Recine moves closer to the zone at number five. And if the attack is from the second zone, then he goes closer to the first zone. Well, if they attack from the middle, then it just stays in the sixth zone. Defense on the front line has two options. This is either such a defense option from a direct spike or coverage of tips that fall behind the block. Given the Italian's height, most of you would like to know about his attacking potential, which we'll talk about now. In situations after passing and some situations after defense, Recine runs straight along the front line. Despite the small growth by the standards of professional volleyball, it seems to me that outside does not use his approach to the maximum. It's usually limited to three steps, that is, as you see on your screens. Francesco stops waiting for the set and then, due to three powerful steps, makes a jump, thereby depriving himself of additional starting speed. Although recently, in situations after defense, outside began to move away much more widely. Although it did not affect the number of steps in his approach in any way. Now, let's analyze the mechanics of the spike and everything that precedes it. As I said earlier, Francesco usually uses three steps in the approach. If you look only at them, then everything is fine. A good and powerful penultimate step that allows you to generate a good jump height. There are also no complaints about the swing of the hands, a powerful and amplitude withdrawal of the hands back, plus a lightning fast withdrawal of them forward. Such a movement also gives an excellent jump gain. But then everything is not so perfect. Recine does not have a very active chest and the press is also not much involved in the attack process. So due to the short approach, the short turn of the body and the weak work of the press, outside loses a lot in the strength of his spike. In fact, all the work falls on the hand. It often seems that it's always inconvenient for him to attack. No matter how he comes to the ball, it's rare to see how well he is applied to the game projectile, as can be seen in most professional players. And this can even be said about the warm-up. This is especially evident in situations after passing a serve where the Italian runs along the sideline. It seems that from this position it will be convenient to hit the line, but a strong and accentuated spike from outside almost never works in this direction. 
In this position, the most convenient option is to attack zone 6 and it will be possible to implement it only if the setter gives a fast set and the central one does not have time for the block. Francesco can attack from 4 to 4, but he does it either on a single block and then with difficulty, or with a narrow set when the block remains slightly to the side. I understand that you have been waiting for this debriefing for a long time in order to learn something for yourself in terms of technique and finally begin to offer decent resistance to high players, but I have to upset you. Francesco is far from ideal in this regard. And as this season shows, it's almost impossible for him to resist elite blockers at the club level. So it's better than copying Angapet's technique, you won't find an option. If you are a short player and tall blockers are playing against you, then the best thing you can do is use their hands. The hands are big, it's not difficult to get into them. Personally, I completely rely on this philosophy. The Italian outside does not often resort to deceptive spikes. Basically, he uses them only when it's inconvenient to attack. Given that the block often surpasses Francesco in height, it's quite difficult for him to perform a high-quality tip, which the defense would not cope with, because the trajectory of such tips will be sufficiently high. If we talk about serve, then in terms of mechanics, serve is practically no different from a spike, except that the player's press works more actively. So it's just worth noting the main trends of Racine during the execution of serve. He serves almost from the middle of the court, shifting a little closer to the first zone. Both the power and the shortened version, in most cases, are sent to the sixth zone, only sometimes going to the zone number one. Float serve already looks more variable, it could be called hybrid, but usually in the hybrid version the toss is the same and Racine has a strong difference in the toss. With the power version he throws and spins the ball much stronger than with a float, although perhaps it's not so obvious at the game. Let's play a game with you, I'm showing you 4 tosses of Francesco and you're trying to guess which one will serve next, power or float? Be sure to write your results in the comments. The blocking technique of Racine is at the highest level. Here he makes full use of his physical capabilities, working quickly and powerfully with his feet, as well as actively helping himself at the expense of his hands. When the middle is far away, and also when Francesco helps on the block himself, then here he does everything, according to the textbook. At the same time, outside tries not to move his hands much to the opponent's side in order to maintain the maximum height of the block. If the Italian understands that the central one is nearby, then he jumps off the spot so as not to interfere with his partner. But even here the player's block height is very decent. Despite the outstanding jump, it cannot be said that Racine realizes all its technical potential to the maximum. That's probably why he is now in the role of the third, or even the fourth outside in Piacenza and in the Italian national team. Yes, he can hardly be called a full-fledged star, but with such growth he has the opportunity to play against the stars in one of the best leagues in the world, and this is worthy of great respect. If you like this video, then be sure to click the like button and subscribe to the channel. And also, do not forget to write who you would like to see as the next hero of this column. The most popular player will definitely be analyzed. Well, Nick was with you, as usual. Love what you do, and you will definitely succeed. See you soon. Bye.